All right, let us have a look at the hind limb skeleton of a horse. Start out up here with the pelvis. We can see here the ilium, the ischium, and then in here the pubis. Let's come back here to the ilium. The ilium, we've got a very large prominence out here laterally. That's the tuber coxae. Here's the tuber sacral. In between them, we have the crest of the ilium. This structure here is called the wing of the ilium. And this is the gluteal surface because the gluteal muscles, primarily the middle gluteal muscles, is going to sit here, attach here. Okay. We come here, we have the greater ischiatic notch. Then we have the ischiatic spine and a lesser ischiatic notch. Now in the horse and other large ungulates, there's a, a sheet of connective tissue in here called the sacrosciatic ligament. And with that, it leaves just a little bit of a hole here and a little bit of a hole here, the greater and lesser ischiatic foramen. Now passing through those holes is in the greater, it's going to be the sciatic nerve primarily coming through here. Then we're also going to have the cranial gluteal artery and vein as well as the gluteal nerves. Okay. In the horse, the only thing that's coming through the lesser is going to be the, the tendon of insertion of the internal obturator muscle. So the internal obturator muscle sits here on the internal surface of the pelvis and then its tendon comes around to attach in here. Okay, there's also an external obturator out here whose tendon also attaches in here and these muscles are some of the lateral rotators of the hip because with the the middle gluteal muscle attaching here there tends to be medial rotation okay anyhow back to the bones okay so we have the acetabulum here this is where articulation occurs with the femoral head we come down in here to the ischium We've got the tuber ischii many of the caudal muscles of the thigh attach here as well as on that sacrosciatic ligament and then we have the ischial arch here. If we come around here, have a look at the pubis. This surface up in here is the pectin of the pubis. We have iliopubic eminences. And then we have the arcuate line in here. Okay, we can see very nicely here the obturator foramen. Okay, obturator means occlusive because those muscles, whether it be the internal or the external obturator, occlude that opening. Yes, the obturator nerve does pass through here, but it's very small. It's not nearly that big. <laughs> okay. So I don't have the same side of the pelvis that we looked at here, but we'll still look at this one here, this isolated one. Okay, so the head is actually this way on this specimen. At the tuber coxae, tuber sacral, the crest of the ilium here, greater ischiatic notch and the lesser ischiatic notch with the ischiatic spine in between them. But very nicely here, we can see the acetabulum. Okay, so the acetabulum, the acetabulum has a articular surface here. Now these foramina here are artificial. I like to call them black and decker foramen. Okay. So this is the articular surface. We see a nice cutout notch here. That's the acetabular notch. And then this area here is the acetabular fossa. And upon that is where the ligament of the head of the femur attaches, as well as the accessory ligament of the femur. Okay. So in the horse, Coming off our prepubic tendon is an accessory ligament. This one doesn't show the groove quite as well, but it comes around here and then it goes up through here and joins the ligament of the head of the femur to attach upon the 
acetabular fossa. Okay, so we can see the tuber ischii, upon which many of our our caudal thigh muscles attach. Here's our obturator foramen. And we come back over here to the pubis. We have the pectin of the pubis, the iliopubic eminence there. This is where the rectus femoris muscle attaches. Alrighty, let's now look at the femur. We come up here at the proximal end. We have the head of the femur that articulates in the acetabulum. We then have out here laterally the greater trochanter, which has both a cranial and a caudal part. On that cranial part, we're going to have the deep gluteal muscle attaching along here. And then we're also going to have part of the middle gluteal coming down. The accessory gluteal muscle and it's going to have a bursa right in here and then attach here that bursa is the trochanteric bursa and sometimes there's inflammation and pain there okay and then the much of the middle gluteal is going to attach along in here on the caudal part of the greater trochanter if we come back here caudally we can see this intertrochanteric crest. Okay, in the dog and in our ruminant, it's going to cross more like this coming over here to the lesser trochanter. Okay, but in the horse, it's more upright. Here's our trochanteric fossa. Out here, once again, laterally, is going to be our third trochanter. Remember, that is where the superficial gluteal muscle attaches. And because of its position here on the horse, that muscle's pull actually pulls cranial to the point of the rotation of the hip. And so therefore, it's going to actually be a flexor. Okay. In general, these gluteal muscles do extend and abduct the hip. Okay. So as we move down, we have the third trochanter upon which the superficial gluteal attaches. And let's come around here to the cranial aspect. We see the trochlea here. Our medial trochlea ridge is much more prominent so that the patella can attach right here. And see the horse will bring that patella up and lock it here. And the intermediate patellar ligament will pass through here. The medial patellar ligament through here and then the patella and the parapatellar cartilage to just kind of lock in this situation here so that when we lock this because of the reciprocal apparatus if we lock the stifling extension it'll lock the Hawken extension okay so then we have coming around caudally we have the epicondyle so we have the lateral and medial epicondyle we see here above the condyles, up here, we have a supracondylar tuberosity, a lateral one and a medial one. And this is where the gastrocnemius muscle attaches. And then here we have the, once again, supracondylar, but this is the supracondylar fossa. This is where the superficial digital flexor muscle attaches here. And then once again, we have the condyles and the intercondylar fossa. And then if we come back around to this aspect, we can see here another fossa. This is the extensor fossa into which the long digital extensor and the pronius tertius attach. And then they're going to pass down through this extensor groove right here in the tibia. So let's look at the isolated femur now. So coming back over here to the head, we can see that the fovea capitis, this is where the ligament of the head of the femur attaches on the head of the femur. Okay. So we come back around here to the greater trochanter with its cranial and its caudal portion. 
the intertrochanteric crest, the trochanteric fossa. We have the lesser trochanter here. Remember that is where the iliopsoas muscle attaches, which is our primary flexor of the hip. Then we have the third trochanter where the superficial gluteal attaches. Down here distally we have our lateral and our medial supracondylar tubercles onto which the gastrocnemius attaches. We have our supracondylar fossa upon which the superficial digital flexor muscle attaches. Okay, so here's our two condyles, our intracondylar fossa. I come around here, we have our epicondyle, so lateral and medial epicondyle. Our trochlea, remember that medial trochlear ridge is the prominent one. And then we have on the lateral side our extensor fossa upon which the long digital extensor and the pronus tertius attach. Moving on down to the tibia and fibula. This one, the fibula is fused generally in horses. It's not fused. I'll show you an example of that. But here we have that extensor groove which helps us know that we're on the lateral side. Here's the tibial tuberosity. Notice there's really nice groove right over here into which the intermediate tendon, patellar tendon attaches. Okay, so in general in the horse the fibula is going to not be attached up here but it is totally fused distally down here. Okay, so this lateral malleolus is originates from the fibula, but it is now part of the tibia. Okay, so come back here. We can see we have a lateral and a medial malleolus. Okay, there's some structures on the surface here that we're going to have to look at on an isolated specimen. Let's come down here now and look at the tibia. This one also is missing the fibula. Okay, so there's the fibula there. As I said, it's usually not attached. Okay, we can see nicely on this proximal surface the condyles. Okay, so the extensor groove here lets us know this is our lateral, this is our medial. We have our intercondylar eminence, and here and here is where we have attachment of our cruciate ligaments. We can see our tibial tuberosity and this is where the intermediate patellar ligament attaches. We come down here distally and we can see this ridge right here tells us that yeah this portion here was the fibula was that portion of the lateral malleolus from the fibula that is now fused with the tibia. Okay, so medial and lateral malleolus. Okay, our cochlea here, notice they're at an angle. Likewise is our trochlea of the talus. And that allows when the horse is running, the horse doesn't want its stifle to be hitting it in the belly and so it has to keep its stifled out laterally as it brings the limb forward but it also wants the distal end of the limb, the hoof, to land more medially located, more middle, so it's in the center of gravity. Okay, so with that, with this angle this angle here that allows the stifle to be out and that foot still to land more central. Okay, pretty cool. So here at the tarsus we can see our calcaneus, our tubercalcanei upon which the common calcanean tendon attaches. That common calcanean tendon consists primarily of the gastrocnemius and the superficial digital flexor tendons. 
but we also have components of the semitendinosus and the biceps femoris in there. We don't have that gracilis portion like we see in the dog or in the ruminant. Okay, so this is our calcaneus, and we have our talus here with the trochlea, the talus, and then we come down here to these bones. We don't see over here. I'll have to look at it from the other side. The fused first and second tarsal bones, but we do see here the central tarsal bone and the third tarsal bone and the fourth tarsal bone. We have a nice little tunnel here, the tarsal canal, and through which is going to be the perforating tarsal artery. Okay, so the cranial tibial artery comes down. When it gets to the tarsus, it becomes the dorsal pedal artery. And then after it gives off this perforating tarsal artery, it becomes dorsal metatarsal artery 3. And that's then going to pass in this groove here, run along the splint bone until it gets to here. And then it's going to go between the splint bone and the cannon bone to come back here to the plantar aspect so that it can then divide into our plantar digital arteries, medial and lateral, okay? Come back up here, we have our tibiotarsal joint, our proximal intertarsal joint, our distal intertarsal joint, and then our tarsal metatarsal joint, okay? So let's come around to the, the plantar aspect here. So here we see once again the calcaneus with our tuber calcanei and we see on this calcaneus this ridge right here. This is our sustentaculum talli. Sustentaculum talli, the name implies it supports the talus. Okay, so you can see it's supporting the talus and it's through this groove right here the deep digital flexor tendon is going to pass. Okay, we come down here and we can see nicely now that fused first and second tarsal bones. And then we see our lateral and medial splint or metatarsal 4 and 2 and our metatarsal 3 here. So just like in the front limb, the metatarsals and the digit are going to be very similar to the metacarpals and the digits there. Okay. Okay, we come down here now to the tarsus. We see our tibial tarsal joint, our proximal intertarsal joint, our distal intertarsal joint, and our tarsal metatarsal joint. Okay, so we have our calcaneus and tuber calcanei, our talus with the trochlea. We see our central tarsal bone. Here's our fused first and second tarsal bone, our third tarsal bone, and our fourth tarsal bone. And here we have our tarsal canal through which the perforating tarsal artery passes. Okay. We come around here we can see nicely that first and second fused tarsal bones. We can also see our sustentaculum talli over which the deep digital flexor tendon passes. Okay. So now as I said the metatarsal bones and the digit are very similar to what we saw in the front limb and so we're not going to spend time dealing with that now. Okay.